So you guys wanted me to 3D print a gun. You kept asking and asking. So we're gonna do it right now. Although we're not printing a Glock because I don't want the ATF to arrest me. We'll start with something a little less lethal. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, and today we're printing a gun. Yes, a gun. Not That's the most requested item I get for 3D printing. Print a gun, print a gun. Okay, well, we're not printing the Liberator today. I figured we need to take some baby steps and work our way up to it. So today we're printing something slightly less lethal in the form of a rubber band gun. Yes, we have it open right here in Kura for you to take a look at. It's a multi-part print with a lot of moving parts, which is what you guys are always asking for. And I figured this would be a good segue into work our way up to printing cool you know cooler better firearms and without me just pumping one out sticking a bullet in it and blowing my hand off I'm sure that that would like entertain the hell out of you guys but I mean for me it'd make it hard to type and I'm a software developer and it would just I don't know it'd get all hard so I figured I'm gonna play it safe so here's the gun right here you can see it's all one model that's on the build platform here you have the trigger you have the pins that hold it together you have the wheel that holds the six rubber bands you have a rocker and a connector that basically cause it to cycle. The rubber band pulls it forward, releases a shot, and goes back. And it all goes together really, really easily. So let's go ahead and get this thing transferred over to the printer so we can print it out. And for you guys that are interested in the technical details, I am printing at a 0.1 millimeter height, which is incredibly high resolution. Uh, I upped the fill density to 40%, which used a lot more material, but it made it a lot more robust and heavy. And you don't want your rubber band gun folding in half. So the print temperature, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that at 220 degrees because that's like my magic sweet spot my printer loves. And uh, for our platform adhesion type, we're going to use brim and we're going to print with no support. And the funny thing is, is you'd think with this trigger overhang here that you wouldn't be able to print without support. The thing surprised the hell out of me. All right, let's get the thing over the printer so you guys can see this final product.
All right, so now we got all of our parts printed, so we need a couple things. Here I have a file, and here I have a sanding block. And we're basically going to use these just to finish the parts. And some super glue to put it all together. That's really important. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sanding block as a, as a flat surface to basically even out the surfaces that I'm going to glue together just to make them adhere better. Um, I already assembled the gun once and used it without any sanding, and it actually did work, but I just wanted to clean it up a little bit before I glued it. So here again, you want to use a flat surface because you want the surfaces to meet as evenly as possible. See here, I'm just checking the lineup and checking the fitment. Looks good. So let's go ahead and uh, work on the other pieces. So this is the barrel, which really isn't a barrel. It just holds the rubber band at the end, and I'm fitting these together. Those are looking pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and sand down the little... Uh, little rocker pin this is used to reset the reset the firing mechanism each time you pull the trigger and this is the wheel that holds the six rubber bands and mainly I'm using the file to get the brim off of it because the brim was on the bottom and it adhered to it really well so uh, if I could print the gun again I'd probably print it with no support or like no brim or no structure excuse me I'm sick today uh, okay, so I'm going ahead and I'm putting it together now. The fitment's good, so let's go ahead and put some super glue on there. Um, I'm pretty sure any super glue will work. I found that the super glue actually works wonders with the PLA plastic. So go ahead and put it together. Looking good. I let that dry for about 5-10 minutes. And now I'm fitting the barrel. Again, I'm putting some super glue on it. This time I put super glue on both sides because this part really needs to be strong because the rubber bands are going to be pulling back on it. And if it's not a strong fit, it's just going to fold in half, basically, and you don't want that. So there we go. Now I'm going to clean up the excess here with a paper towel because uh, you don't want that glue to just dry in big globs because then you want the file and sand it off. It's better just to wipe it off while it's still wet. And there you go. Uh, the main part is now assembled. Now we get to uh, assemble the mechanism inside. So here you can see I'm putting the trigger into the block that resets the firing mechanism. And the little pin, I don't know what the technical name is for these little parts. But I go ahead and drop it in. And everything's held together with 3D printed pins. Which I, I think is just funny still to this day. You like print something and it's held together with other printed parts. It, it's just cool. There's nothing on this gun other than the glue that wasn't 3D printed. So go ahead and put that through. Now the trigger mechanism is just about done. There we go. And now I'm adding the rubber band retainer. Holds six shots. The gun's remarkably easy to assemble. I found that it printed one additional pin. I guess they expected you might break a pin. Um, so there's a spare part on the build plate. I didn't actually need it. So here you can see me cycling the gun. Each time you pull the trigger, the rocker falls forward to, and resets to the next rubber band. And it pushes the trigger forward again. Pretty cool. All right, so here's the finished product all assembled and glued together. Kind of give you an idea of its size based on the awesome Hello Kitty mouse pad. Uh, very, very simple design. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And uh, it's really strong. The glue holds this PLA together fantastically. All right, time to load it up, guys. Here you can see you add one rubber band. And then you go ahead and cock it back to the next uh, the next chamber, I guess, if you will. Put another rubber band on it. And you just keep repeating this process until you have all six rubber bands loaded. Now, for me, the rubber bands my wife ended up buying me didn't work out too good. So I went and got some different rubber bands. These are uh, size 33 rubber bands, 3.5 by 1 8 inch. And they seem to work the best. You want a really strong rubber band to cycle the mechanism. And here's our first test firing. Okay, first one was a misfire. That fired two, three, four, five. And then the last one got stuck, six. Oh, I guess I had another one on there. So the mechanism got a little jammed up, so I went ahead and filed it down. Uh, did a little cleanup, and now we're going to add a laser sight to it because... Uh, you know, these rubber band guns, they have such aggressive range and accuracy. They really warrant uh, Wicked Lasers Nano Green uh, being blue taped to the side of it. So here we go. This is more just for fun. And to give you an idea of where the rubber bands are actually going. Yeah, it's cool. You wouldn't want to put that laser on a real gun, though, because you'd blind the shit out of everybody. So here you can see the rubber bands firing. 
They're getting close to the dot. And we're empty. Alright, I figured it'd be fun to superimpose some battlefield <laughs> footage over here. And I can help myself out with the rubber band gun here. So it's like, oh, I shot that guy. He didn't go down, though. <laughs> I just I just did this for fun, guys. I thought, I, I thought I'd get a kick out of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, the rubber band gun. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.